learning how to use a really important tool in the Drupal community. We store all of our code in a version control system called Git. So in order to be able to use the latest development versions that people are working on and to help modify those and make changes and test the changes that others are making, we need to use Git to get a copy of our code rather than just downloading that zip or tarball that you normally would. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to install Git on your local computer, and then we'll cover some basic Git commands to get you sort of comfortable with it and show you how to use Git to download the latest development version of Drupal 8. So to begin, we'll start at a Drupal ladder and we'll move up to the second step, which is install Git. And when I click on that link, you'll see that we get to a page that actually has quite a lot of information on it. So we're going to break this into three sections. And we're going to start off with installing Git and getting that set up and ready. So when we scroll to that section on the page, uh, you'll see there's instructions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. But regardless of which operating system you're using, you're going to go to git-scm.com for the downloads. And on the downloads page, you'll see that it's auto-detecting that I'm on Windows, um, but the other uh, operating systems are available, so there's Mac. Uh, there's also Linux. Now for Linux, if you click on this, you're going to find text instructions for what commands to run. There's not a, a downloadable package for that. But we do have Solaris and Linux instructions. We have Windows. Uh, I'm on Windows um, mostly because there's sort of the most steps involved with Windows. Um, so I'm going to save the file to exe and then I'll open it up once I have it downloaded. And this opens up the installation wizard and pretty much we're going to be able to just leave the defaults uh, as we go through here. It's your classic kind of um, setup for a new program that you're installing, like where you want it to be, what shortcuts you want, and that kind of a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and leave these at defaults, although we will talk about one of the options uh, when we get there. So I can leave these. And now we're going to get to a screen that's going to talk about our path environment. And uh, this download on, on Windows provides a program called Git Bash, uh, which will let us use Git just like you would on a Linux system. We could change uh, to be able to use Git from the regular Windows command prompt, um, which you would definitely want to do if you were using something like Sigwin and you wanted to be able to sort of run bash things in your regular terminal. Um, we don't really need to do that, and in this instance, I'm just going to use the, the Git Bash program that comes with this, this installation of Git, as that's really straightforward and uh, should cover our needs. And uh, the rest of this stuff I'm going to leave, again, at its default, and just continue uh, and finish up the installation. And I do not want to see release notes, so let me turn that off, and then we'll finish. So now I have that uh, installed locally, and if I minimize my browser here, um, you'll see that uh, the, the default setting was to put a shortcut to git bash on my desktop, uh, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. And let's type the word git and hit enter. And I'm getting a whole bunch of um, help information on the, the various commands that are available. That means git is working. So we have it installed and git is actually working. So that has us with a good start. Uh, if we go back to the instructions, if we scroll down a little bit. Um, you're going to see that there's uh, some next steps with Git, and there's some basic configuration that we want to take care of um, just to make sure we're all ready to go. They're just copy and paste lines, so what I'll need to do is go into my Git bash, or if you're on Mac or Linux, you would just uh, open up your terminal, and, uh, and we're going to go ahead and, uh, and do these commands so we can get things set up properly. So let me move this kind of out of the way here so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen. And so we just basically we just need to put these commands um, just as they are. So first I need to do um, a git config and then dash dash global doesn't mean for all users. It means every instance where this user is doing something globally within git, not per project. So I'm going to do a global, global configuration for this user and put my name in. Um, so when I do a commit, my name will be associated with it. We need to do a similar thing with email. So in the Git world, having your identifying your work with your commits uh, with your name and email address is, is the standard. And so we want to set ourselves up to do that properly. So I'll go ahead and put my uh, email address in here. And 
Uh, and then last thing is just these um, uh, line endings, uh, b differences between Windows and, and Linux. We're just going to go ahead and, and set that um, just to make sure that we don't mess up anybody else's work because of our line endings. So if we look at our instructions here, it's telling me that this configuration is, is in my home directory somewhere. So let's go take a look and see what happened when we typed those commands, because we didn't see anything on the screen. And uh, so I'm going to go into my home directory. Uh, I'm the administrator user here. And you'll see there's this file with, with no name. It's, uh, it's a git config file. The name of the file is dot git config, which makes it hidden. So you'll need to be able to see hidden uh, files to see it. Uh, and then if I go in and open this up with just a regular text editor, uh, you'll see it's just a text file and the things that I typed into the screen and saw no response were actually getting written into this file. So that's where my configuration stuff is actually stored. So we have Git. Now let's use it to download a Drupal project and see how that works. So if we scroll down the page here, um, we'll see that we have instructions for uh, downloading a project. Um, there are also instructions for downloading Drupal itself, which we'll get to in the next section. So uh, let's just go ahead and follow the instructions here. Um, first of all, we need to make sure we're in the right place. We want to download a module into the modules directory or a theme into the themes directory, right? So this is telling me I need to make sure that I'm in the right location because wherever I run the command is where stuff's going to get downloaded. So I'm going to see where I am, which uh, I'm currently in my home directory, and I'm going to move into where my web root is. So which uh, for me is a directory called websites, wherever it is for you. And I have a Drupal 7 installation here. So I'm in my Drupal 7 installation. And of course, we always put our modules in sites, all modules. So I'm going to move into that directory using uh, CD and LS. These are bash commands. Again, I'm on a git bash, not on the regular Windows terminal. Um, so I'm in the right place. Now let's go find a project. Um, and I'm going to use admin menu as the example here. This is a module I want to download and use on my site, but I want to get it using Git. So I go to the version control tab. All the projects on Drupal.org have this. Uh, I can pick which version I want. It's a seven. I'm using Drupal seven, so I need the seven version and the three X branch would appear to be the most current. Uh, and so the instructions uh, that are down here are for me to be able to get that. So basically, I just need to be able to copy and paste this. So let me highlight and copy this line. I'm going to git clone. Clone is how you would download a new git project. I'll go into my git bash um, and I'm going to go ahead and just paste that in so I don't have to, to type it and then hit enter. And that's going to begin the clone process. Um, which can take a few minutes depending on the size of the project. So I'll let that do what it needs to do. And then once we're done, if I do a ls to list, you'll see I now have admin menu in my modules directory. And if I go inside of that folder, I actually have the admin menu module. Handy dandy. And now I could go enable it and use that module just like anything else. So now that we have a git checkout, let's play around with some basic commands. So git status is a good one. I can see which branch I'm on and if I've made any changes locally. Um, another good one uh, is git branch. And I do dash a on that and I see not just what I my local branches, but also anything that's remote up on drupal.org. So I can see all of the ones that are available. And the one with the star is the one I'm using, uh, which is the 73x that I just uh, cloned. And then um, another good uh, basic command to be able to use is git log. And if I put a dash three after the end, it'll only bring up the last three commits. So the log is a list of all of the commits so I can see the history of what's gone on in this particular branch. So the last three commits um, are listed here and I could do five or 10 or whatever I want. Okay, so now let's take a look at downloading Drupal core with Git, and we're going to download the latest development version of Drupal 8. So uh, first of all, again, I need to make sure I'm in the right location. I don't want to download core into my modules directory in another site. I want to start a new site. So I need to go back to my web root. Um, and you see the Drupal 7 site I was working on, and I'm going to put Drupal 8 next to it. Um, and if we go back to Drupal.org, uh, I'm going to go to the Drupal core project page 
And again, it has a version control tab, just like any other project. And when I click there again, I can pick the version and I want to get the 8x version, which is the latest development work that's going on. And I can come down and then I can get my clone command uh, for getting that. So I'll copy that and go back over here to git bash. Um, again, just want to make sure I'm in the right place. So I'm in my web root directory where all my websites live, top level. And then uh, I just need to go in here and paste this command. So let me do my fun git bash program pasting here. Um, hit enter. This is going to take longer than the admin module download did. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So just have some patience while it downloads, uh, clones all of the files that it needs. And now if I list, uh, you'll see I have Drupal. It just downloads it to a folder called Drupal. I could change that name if I want to. I'll go inside and when I list the contents, you'll see it looks quite different. Drupal 8's file directory uh, structure is, is different than Drupal 7. So I definitely know I have the right thing. So that's how we use Git to get the latest development version of Drupal. And now, since I'm using Git, I can do things like apply patches and create my own patches and help other people with testing and working on making Drupal 8 even better.